Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin dominance, addressing the elephant in the room. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, if you have watched any of the last few Bitcoin dominance feature length films, or if you are a member of ITC Premium, you will, of course, already know what it is I'm going to talk about. But I thought it's time to do a dedicated video on the elephant in the room. Now, there's actually two elephants in the room. The first elephant is the thumbnail that I'm using for this video. This is very different than uh, most thumbnails that I use, but just to tell you why, I just wanted to try out some of the AI uh, image generation tools. And I just simply asked one of the tools, I just said, you know, could you create me a thumbnail that's appropriate for a video titled Bitcoin Dominance Addressing the Elephant in the Room? And this is more or less what it came up with. And I thought it, I actually thought it looked kind of cool. So uh, that's why it is the thumbnail. So I'm glad we got that one out of the way. Now, let's get to the other elephant in the room. Um, and that is addressing some of the theories that I've had over the last three years, okay? Because there's a lot of nuances to them, especially this late in the cycle. There's been many, many theories. Now, listen, guys, I will be the first to tell you that a lot of my theories don't come true. A lot of them don't, right? And my biggest weakness as an investor is sometimes I'm, I'm really stubborn about things, right? Like sometimes I'm, I, I, I feel a very strong conviction about something. And when I'm proven wrong, I'm not always willing to flip my view as quickly as I should. If you followed me long enough, you will be aware of that. But there's other times where I will, you know, express a view, a theory, and it does come true. And I will try to ride that momentum of that view for as long as possible because I, I felt like it was such a strong conviction. So, for instance, in this case, it was just keep my crypto portfolio Bitcoin heavy until Bitcoin dominance reaches 60 percent. Right. How many times have you heard me? How many times have you heard me say that over the last three years? Bitcoin heavy until 60 percent Bitcoin dominance. I have said it over and over and over again, and I felt like it was such an easy view to have. It was such an easy way to invest. Essentially, what I did to get people up to speed is I converted my altcoins to Bitcoin at the beginning of 2022, right? The reason why was because it was pretty clear that the Fed was going to begin raising interest rates and going through quantitative tightening. And if you look at what happened the last time the Fed did that, right, when they really started to raise rates, you can see that Bitcoin dominance went up. So I just figured, hey, guys, they're about to start raising rates. We're likely going to see Bitcoin dominance go up. And it did. The other thing that they, you know, that, that it was pretty easy to anticipate was the fact that the Fed was going to begin reducing the size of their balance sheet. And the last time the Fed reduced the size of their balance sheet, Bitcoin dominance went up. So I just figured, hey, guys, look. They're going to reduce the size of their balance sheet. Bitcoin dominance is likely going to go up. So it did. So what I did was I converted my ETH to Bitcoin, converted my alts to Bitcoin. And in late 2022, I only bought Bitcoin in terms of crypto. Why? Right? Why? Why didn't I go out and buy altcoins? It was because I felt so convinced that Bitcoin dominance was going to 60%. And I didn't want to take on the risk of the altcoin market. And I said back then that some altcoins would likely outperform Bitcoin, and some have. And some of you guys have done pretty well on them. And I, I tip my hat to you, right? I really do. In fact, last cycle, I was you, right? Last cycle, I was you. I, I chased the altcoins in the Bitcoin dominance subtrend. And then the next cycle later, I said to hell with that. It would have just been much easier buying Bitcoin and sticking with that and watching most altcoins bleed back to the king until the Fed goes to sufficiently looser monetary policy. So that's where I'm coming from. In fact, my main view expressed in 2022 on ITC Premium in about mid-2022 was sell ETH to Bitcoin here 
and double up my ETH by waiting for ETH Bitcoin to go to 0 0.0375. And I'll look at that, right? 0 0.0373. The targets I gave back then were conservative, right? Of 0 0.0375. Because now, by simply converting your ETH to Bitcoin in 2022, you still maintain exposure to the upside but you minimized your downside risk. And now all these years later, even if you ignored these tops, right? all these years later, ETH Bitcoin is down 51% just from the top where I converted. If you actually you know, were able to sell it up here, 57% down, almost 58% down. And I want you to think about how many times over the last few years, someone told you that ETH was holding up well against Bitcoin. And then you look back on it all these years later, and you know that those views were completely wrong, right? It never was holding up well. It's just that you had a lot of investors getting excited about every single one of these lower highs. So we're going to talk about this because I don't, I don't actually expect ETH Bitcoin to go down forever. Um, I do know that there are a lot of people that do, and that's fine, right? I mean, it's a market, guys. Um, it, it, you know, and, and if at this point in the cycle, you're unable to, to sort of take in other views and, and appreciate those views, then that's your own problem. The only way, you know, one of the best ways to become a really good investor is to not tune out the opinions that disagree with you, but it's to embrace them and figure out what is it that you're potentially missing. And if you take the opposing view and you, you think about it, and you figure out what that person is missing, then you can confidently go forward knowing that you took out, you know, you you, you took in, in the other opinion and you rejected it. But if you are unwilling to hear out the other opinion, where I said ETH Bitcoin was going to go to 0.03 to 0.04, then you're stuck down here at 0.037. Now you're hoping I'm right, right? Before you were, you were laughing that I was wrong. Now you're hoping that I'm right. Whereas if you just were patient and waited, now you have so much more strength, right? Now you could, you know, you could, you, you have so much strength to come into the market with ETH Bitcoin at 0.037 or to figure out, you know, what if I want to, you know, how do I get into this if I, if I believe in the future of, of ETH? Um, but that's not, I mean, that's not the elephant in the room, right? That's not the elephant in the room. This is the elephant in the room. I want to, I want to draw it out as clearly as I can so that you guys know exactly what it is I'm talking about. There's several things that I said. Bitcoin dominance to 60%. ETH Bitcoin to 0.03 to 0.04. Alt Bitcoin pairs to 0.25. I have said these things over and over and over again for three years. For three years. And now... There's an elephant in the room. And that elephant, I'll explain right now. Bitcoin dominance is already at 59%. It's almost there, guys, right? It's almost there. And to me, I'm just so ready to get this over with, right? 60%. I What I think, I, I think Bitcoin dominance might rally into the rate cut. That's what it did last time. Right, Bitcoin dominance rallied into the rate cut on September 18th. Right, so look right here. You see September 18th, Bitcoin dominance rallied into the rate cut, and then it had a pullback. Now I want you to look at this. If you connect these highs, the next FOMC, right, the next FOMC is November 7th. Okay, November 7th. Now if you take a price label and go out to November 7th and look at this trend line, it's going to basically get you almost to 60%. Okay? So I think the most likely outcome is that dominance rallies into the rate cut. And it gets us basically to 60%. Okay? That's what I'm thinking of. That's what I'm, I'm leaning towards right now. This is a log scale. Let's try to switch to a regular scale. Um, but it doesn't really change it. Right? It's still about 59.7%. So... Bitcoin dominance is really close, really, really close to 60%, right? And, and so the question, right, at this point, the question that I, I think we have to ask ourselves is 
how can all three of these things be true? That's the elephant in the room. Okay. And in order to understand this, we really have to dissect it. There's two different ways to think about this. One way is let's try to figure out a way where they're all three simultaneously correct. The other way is to go back to what I said a year ago on November 10th, 2023. And I will show you exactly what I said. And I, I, I posted about this before as well. Um, but here it is. Okay. Sorry, let me... Uh, let me try to get this better so you can see it. Um, this is option two. All right. Let me uh, make it so that there's, I guess it's already. Okay. Option one is we will figure out a way that all three can be true. Option two is this post from a year ago. And this post from a year ago is going to become more relevant in one to two weeks than it ever has been. And I'll read it to you. You know what really keeps me up at night? It is the 60% target I have given on Bitcoin dominance. By the way, when I posted this, dominance was at like 52%. All right, let me double check, but I think it was at 52. Um, yeah, it was right around 52%. You know what really keeps me up at night? It is a 60% target I've given on Bitcoin dominance, but not because I think it cannot get there. The reason it keeps me up is because I'm worried that I say alter goodbye at 60% dominance, and then we will see good dominance go to 70%. What if Bitcoin dominance is not a bleeder? What if it's an oscillator? A bleeder puts in a lower low. Bitcoin dominance, despite all the money, money printing, VC shills, etc., did not put in a lower low. So... I do not stay up, up at night wondering what alts I should recommend to you. I stay up worried that I'm going to get bullish on alts at 60% dominance only to watch them only to watch dominance go to 70%. 60% is still my target. I have to consider both views here. Okay. 60% is my target. Now, where did I come up with 60%? You know, where did that come from? It came from two places, actually. The first place, well, really three. But the first place um, where where it came from was basically just the idea that when you get an alt Bitcoin bubble, eventually they should return to where the bubble began. And I think you could argue that the bubble for altcoins against Bitcoin occurred right here, right? That's where they aggressively started to break down, and that just happens to correspond to around 60%, right? So that's where it originally came from when I said 60% all those years ago. Now, there were some other things that I latched onto, but only because it gave me confirmation bias, okay? One of the things that gave me confirmation bias was the FIB retracement tool. So if you look at the FIB retracement tool and you look at last cycle and you, you look to see where dominance rallied to, it rallied to the 0.618. That was 73% last cycle. But if you look at, at this cycle and you look at, at the 0.618 FIB retracement, it happened to correspond to 60% Bitcoin dominance, right? So I had already said dominance was going to go to 60%. And then I found the FIB retracement tool agreed with it. So then because it confirmed my views, which is, again, that's something I need to work on, but because it confirmed my views... I said, dominance is going to go to 60%. That's where it came from. Okay. The other reason is because last cycle, it had already gone to 73%. I didn't think it was going to go to 73% this cycle because we have stable coins making up a lot of the market cap, um, which eat into the, you know, to the otherwise, what would be a higher, a higher Bitcoin dominance. The other thing that I think a lot of people, you know, look at, I think a lot of people just assumed that Bitcoin dominance would put in a lower low last cycle. And I just kept saying it's not going to. Right. And I think a lot of people were just sort of saying, well, this is, you know, looks like Bitcoin dominance is going to just keep on dropping. But with all the money printing that we had in 2020 and 2021 and all the money just going in to these random altcoins, dominance could still not take out the low from 2017. Right. Are you are you kidding me? That, that, that was the thing I was struggling with. 
And that's why I became so bullish on Bitcoin dominance. Because the bear market started in early 2022 when I was willing to admit it. And dominance was still at a higher low compared to 2017 and early 2018. Because of that, because of that, I said, no, dominance is not going to go down here where basically all these other people think it's going to go. Instead, it's going to go to 60%. And here we are. And here we are. So these were the reasons to be bullish on, on Bitcoin dominance. But, you know, the elephant in the room, right? The elephant in the room is that Bitcoin dominance is at 59% now. ETH Bitcoin is at 0.037 now. So this has already come true and this is almost about to come true. The only thing that's not even close to being true is this. If you look at alt Bitcoin pairs, total three minus USDT divided by Bitcoin, what do you notice? They are still well off their lows, right? Well off their lows. Now, I consider altcoins to be oscillators at best. Meaning that eventually they likely will go down to the range low. But how can alt Bitcoin pairs drop 30 something percent from here and somehow Bitcoin dominance only goes to 60 percent? What madness is this, right? What fresh hell are we living in to think that could be the case? How could how could altcoins drop 35% against Bitcoin from here and dominance top at 60? Well, one of these three things might not be true. It's possible that dominance goes higher than 60%. It's possible that ETH Bitcoin bounces, offsetting the capitulation by alt Bitcoin pairs. And it's also possible that stablecoin dominance goes up enough to keep Bitcoin dominance somewhat tempered. There's a lot of different outcomes, but every one of them is, is worth your attention. And, and we're going to go through each one. Um, it is going to be somewhat tedious, but if you find this stuff interesting, I, I think it's worthwhile for you to stick around just so you really get a grasp of, of what it is you should be looking for. Over the next few weeks, this is where things are are, are about to get very critical. I think um, in the uh, in the cryptoverse. So, what's going to happen, right? How how can this be? How can alt Bitcoin pairs drop thirty something percent and dominance top at sixty? Well, there does exist a reality that dominance might go above the 0.618 fib retracement, right? In fact, if you look at like Bitcoin USD. Last cycle, it retraced to the 0.618, but then this cycle, it went all the way back up to new all-time highs, right? To new highs. So just because dominance went to the 618 last cycle doesn't mean it has to top there this cycle, but it is still a reasonable top. The way to think about this, I think, is, is as follows. If you have been on the Bitcoin dominance train, from 38% till 59, you are in such a major power of strength right now, right? You have a lot of strength. You've kept your portfolio Bitcoin heavy. You've ignored all the alt season calls. And now you have the luxury of, of sort of seeing what happens at 60% dominance and seeing if that's the top or not. You know, is that where alt Bitcoin pairs start to bounce? Is it not? If it is where they start to bounce, then that's where you could uh, take on more risk if you want. But if they don't, right, there's a lot of people, guys, you know, and I, I, I'm i telling you this because I see them. A lot of the people that used to, to laugh at me about the, the Bitcoin dominance views are now really hoping I'm right, right? Because they're, they're tired of watching their altcoin bleed against Bitcoin. So it's important to catch these momentum shifts in the market, right? I've been bullish on Bitcoin dominance for a long time, but I also think it's going to likely go down next year. That's my base case right, as it dominance goes down next year. But what happens for the rest of this year, right? What happens for the rest of this year? So there's there's several different outcomes here. One outcome is that dominance goes higher than 60%. So that, you know, all Bitcoin pairs collapse, but dominance actually goes higher than 60%. In fact, the 618 is at 60%. If it were to go up to, say, the 786, that would put it all the way up at 66%, which 
that would probably be the case if all Bitcoin pairs crash while ETH Bitcoin is also crashing, right? So like if, if ETH dominance continues to go down, kind of like in line with this view, if ETH dominance continues to go down here while all Bitcoin pairs go down, then it's possible Bitcoin dominance overshoots the 60% target. But there are ways where 60% could still theoretically be the top, right? What, there's, two, there's two primary ways I can think of just off the top of my head. One way is that ETH Bitcoin bounces soon, right? So you could have a scenario where ETH Bitcoin bounces and then alt Bitcoin pairs collapse, but because alt Bitcoin pairs are going down while ETH Bitcoin is going up, it sort of tempers the move by Bitcoin dominance. And that doesn't seem like the most likely outcome, right? If we're being honest, right? It doesn't seem like the most likely outcome, but it's also not impossible. Um, if you actually look at, at ETH Bitcoin, one of the things you'll notice is that there's these, there's these, major patterns that it goes through, right? And and the pattern is is something that looks like this, right? So you have sort of this double top structure, you set a range low, and then eventually ETH Bitcoin breaks below the range low. You see this, right? Where ETH Bitcoin breaks below the range low. And the first monthly candle where it breaks below the range low here, it then bottoms within two to three months. In 2016, it bottomed on the second month. In 2019, it bottomed on the third month. This cycle, so far, we are in month number three from the breakdown, right? Month number three. In fact, if you actually look at, at sort of the weekly moves by, by ETH Bitcoin, it does look somewhat similar to what happened near the end of 2019's uh, downturn, where it was sort of consolidating around this level, and, and, and then it ended up breaking down one more time. One of the things I said is that the low is not really likely to be in until ETH Bitcoin rallies above its 50-day SMA. If you look at 2016 and 2019 and you pull up the 50-day SMA of ETH Bitcoin, what you'll notice is that after ETH Bitcoin durably broke down, once it crossed the 50-day SMA off a big bounce, the low was in, right? Same thing in 2019. There was this range low. And then after, after ETH Bitcoin durably broke below the range low, right, for, you know, just for some time, after ETH Bitcoin crossed the 50-day SMA, the low was in. So that was what I was struggling with with 0.038, is that there wasn't a major bounce off of that low to a, a level above the 50-day SMA, right? So following the durable breakdown from the range low and not sort of the fake outs, ETH Bitcoin has not yet reclaimed its 50-day SMA. Once it reclaims the 50-day SMA on a daily close, there's a good chance that that's the bottom, right? Or that the bottom is in, is what I should say, right? Is that about to happen? You know, ETH Bitcoin is right now at the 2016 high. Um, it just went to 0.036. I've, I've said that is one of my main targets. That was my base case uh, three years ago was that it goes down to around 0 0.0375, 0 0.036, somewhere in that area. It could go below it, right? It's possible for it to go below it. I don't want to give you the impression that it can't. But if ETH Bitcoin were to bounce here while alt Bitcoin pairs were to, to capitulate, then it could allow dominance to still top at 60%, right? That That is an outcome that is at least somewhat worthwhile to consider, right? Somewhat worthwhile. Um, I think it's hard to sort of envision that scenario a lot because it just seems like ETH has been so weak for so long that, you know, why would it, why would it all of a sudden offset all Bitcoin pairs now? And especially with the idea of ETH eventually going home, which is what I've said is likely going to happen later on this year. It just doesn't seem like ETH should, should necessarily find that strength. But remember in 2019, when it bounced, you know, it, you know, it, and, and in 2016, when it bounced, it got a big move up and then it, it came back down a little bit again, but it was not a, a double low, a double bottom, kind of like it was in 2019. So that could also happen. So one way for all three of these to be true is that ETH Bitcoin goes up while alt Bitcoin pairs go down. That's one way it could be true. Now, of course, there's going to be people that are converting their ETH now, 
to to something else, right? I and I think there are a lot of people selling their ETH now, um, uh, for whatever reason. And 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 you know, I mean, I still think ETH USD is going to go down in Q4, uh, but I think ETH Bitcoin is in the process of bottoming out between 0.03 to 0.04, right? And that's been my view for three years now. Um, so I, you know, I think we're in this we're in this scenario right now where people that are sort of disappointed by the by the flipping not happening, they're now capitulating their ETH for other for other assets during the quarter where ETH Bitcoin is likely bottoming out. Um, it doesn't mean it can't go lower, but it just means that these people, if you're wondering why ETH, ETH is still struggling, it's because the people that I think were more so bullish on the flipping are now giving up on that view. Um, and they're selling ETH for something else. And, and I think it's still going to, I still think we're going to see some weakness by ETH USD for a couple more months. Um, ETH Bitcoin is a little bit less clear. I could see ETH Bitcoin carving out a bottom anytime between now and and the, the, the end of the year through the second week of January at the absolute latest. That's my view. But that's one way that this could play out is ETH Bitcoin bounces while alt Bitcoin pairs capitulate. Option number two, option number two is that stablecoin dominance goes up a lot so that yes, Bitcoin dominance goes up, but because stablecoin dominance is going up more, it helps to sort of temper the, the move by Bitcoin dominance, right? I think that's sort of the other the other view that could make it so that all three of these are are correct. And if you actually look at, at USDT dominance, if you look at USDT dominance, what you'll notice is that it's actually been putting in higher lows for a while. And if it were, you know, if it were to get a strong rally here, right, if this is just a fake out, right, if this is just a fake out below this trend line, everyone's getting bullish on it, right? But if it's just a fake out and it goes up again, let's say it rallies up to this trend line here, then that could put USDT dominance at 7% by the end of the year, right? If it if it follows that path of, of holding this higher low structure and, and then going back up to the lower highs, right? So you could have a scenario where USDT dominance is going up. Therefore, while Bitcoin dominance is going up, it might not go up as much uh, because the the stable coins are are taking up a larger and larger market share. So if you were actually to look at at USDT market cap, you can see that it's been increasing for a long period of time. This is why Bitcoin dominance is unlikely to go to you know to seventy three percent at least not anytime soon because the stable coin market cap is so much higher today than it was you know way back then. In fact, if you were to add in USDT dominance plus USDC dominance. It's at, you know, almost 7%, right? It's almost at 7%. And if you were to add on that 7% to Bitcoin dominance, it would already be at 66%, which would be more in line with where it was last cycle around the time of rate cuts, right? So last cycle, when the Fed cut rates in July, Bitcoin dominance, it was at the end of July. So it was right, it was right here, right? Uh, the week of the last week of July it was right there. Bitcoin dominance was at around like 68%, right? So it makes sense. If you if you didn't have the, the same amount of stable coins, Bitcoin dominance would already be a lot higher. But it's because the stable coin market that likely keeps it below this level. So the other way that all three of these things could be true is if USDT dominance goes up enough to really start to sort of eat in to into into Bitcoin. The other thing too, by the way, I have to point out is that if you look closely at at alt Bitcoin pairs, when I when I sort of pull this ticker up, I'm only subtracting out USDT, right? I'm not even subtracting out other stable coins, and you, we probably should, right? It, but it's just sort of a rounding error. But if we were to add in, um, you know, if we were to say also subtract out USDC, you can see that the range low is still 0.25, right? That doesn't change. The thing that does change, though, is that all Bitcoin pairs are already at 0.35, whereas if you don't exclude USDC, um, they're at 0.37. So in this way, if you look at it through this lens, all Bitcoin pairs only need to drop 29%, right? To get to the range low. And there's also a couple other stable coins as well that have non-negligible market caps. So if you were to add those in, it's possible that all Bitcoin pairs don't actually have to drop as much to get to whatever the actual range low is. So there are ways that all three of these things could be accurate um, and, 
And and those that's how it can be accurate, right? you know, what I just said. In fact, if you look, the, one of my favorite ways to look at the market, I don't really share this with you guys a lot because I kind of like keeping it to myself. But uh, if you actually look at, at it like this, um, uh, Bitcoin dominance plus ETH dominance plus USDT dominance plus USDC dominance, you get a chart that looks like this. So why don't we just consider this to be blue chip dominance for a minute or flight to safety dominance, right? Bitcoin plus ETH plus USDC plus USDT. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna be like, why is ETH in there? I don't really know. I do consider ETH a blue chip um, and it's taken a huge hit and a lot of people are going to be dunking on it, but it did the same exact thing in 2016 and did the same exact thing in 2019 and it still eventually went to new all-time highs. So, you know, it's funny because now everyone's sort of dunking on ETH and saying that it's dead and the people that are saying that it's dead are the people that were calling for the flipping two years ago, but this is what it's always done. If you add up Bitcoin dominance plus ETH dominance plus USDT dominance plus USDT dominance, you get a chart that looks like this. And you can see that it's it keeps topping out at the same level that it topped out at in 2019 and 2020. You see that, right? You see how it just keeps on topping out at that level? There was a final major move up here, but it was very short-lived. So it's possible that it moves up again to the to this top right here you see here where it hit this top again before the actual major rally above it when it when was it it was in november of the having year guys november of the having year and we are about to be in november of the having year which happens to correspond to similar types of moves after the fed cut rates in 2019 right in 2019 two months after the fed cut this metric rallied up to this trend line the fed cut in september Two months after the Fed cuts rates is November, which is next month. So whether you care about monetary policy or whether you just think, hey, it's the having year, let's forget of everything else, this metric came up to 82% in November of the having year or of the year that the Fed cut rates, two months after the Fed cut rates. So if this metric moves up again to 83%, that's a three percent. That's a three and a half percent move from where we currently are. Oh, let's just say four percent, four percent move. What if one percent of that goes into Bitcoin dominance to get it to sixty percent, maybe sixty-one, and the other three percent goes into USDT dominance, right? So remember, one percent into Bitcoin dominance. If 3% goes into USDT dominance, well, if 2% goes into it, it gets back to 7%. Um, but do you see how, like, it, it's possible that it could play out? It, it's still possible that, that it could all work out like that? I think the other thing is that, you know, when I say 60% dominance, I've always said approximately 60%, right? That doesn't mean that the minute it hits 60%, that has to be the top. It could be. Um, but there's also a chance that it's not. And so... I want people to remain open-minded, right? I just spent a long time showing you ways that all three of these things can still be true and not disagree with one another. There does exist a way where this is right, this is right, but 60% is not the top, and it ends up being, you know, somewhere between, say, like 61 to 66%. There does exist a world where that happens. There does, right? Again, when dominance was at 38%, I always thought 60% was a conservative target that we should easily be able to get to. I Again, earlier, when I showed you this post, what did it say when the dominance was at 52? I said, what keeps me up at night is not my 60% target because I it's not because I don't think it can get there. It's because I'm worried that I think dominance tops at 60 and then it just keeps on going, right? I, I do wonder sometimes, you know, do we, do we, does the, do the, does the altcoin market need to have that like, oh crap moment of like, wait, where's the actual bottom against Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin just keeps showing relative strength and these altcoins have not been. So this is the, uh, this is the elephant in the room. What if, right, what if ETH Bitcoin doesn't bottom at the 2016 high? Like, what if it just keeps going down to, like, all the way to my... The worst case scenario I put out for ETH Bitcoin for this cycle is 0.03. So, if it drops to the worst case scenario of 0.03, 
in my in my view, that's another twenty percent drop. And if that if the, if it if it dropping down there to 0 0.03 simultaneously happens while all Bitcoin pairs are dropping to 0 0.25, then dominance would have to go above 60%, right? So this is one of those things where if you have followed my views on on dominance for the last several years, you're probably feeling pretty good right now, right? Because you're Bitcoin heavy. You've been Bitcoin heavy for three years. You recognize that all the altcoins you held once upon a time, if you wanted to go back and buy those, you could probably get them for a much cheaper price than you could have back then if you denominate it in Satoshis. Now, if you denominate it in US dollars, I can't help you. I don't think in terms of US dollars as it relates to my portfolio. I think in terms of Satoshis, right? Bitcoin is my unit of account, not US dollars. And until you... Until you get on the same page as me with that, you're going to always struggle with my views on the market. You have to see it through the lens that I see it in order to appreciate the views as I express them. If you value your portfolio in terms of US dollars, my analysis is going to not go well with your views, right? You're just not going to like it. You're not going to care about it. But if you think about it in terms of Satoshis, then it makes complete sense. Complete sense. So that's where I am right now is to say my target is 60%. Give me 60%. At 60%, I will flip neutral on Bitcoin dominance. I will flip neutral. If 60% is achieved and all Bitcoin pairs are not at the range low, then I would say it's more likely than not that all Bitcoin pairs continue dropping. Whether that means Bitcoin dominance goes above 60% is not my main concern. My main concern is just all Bitcoin pairs coming down here. Because they could come down here while ETH Bitcoin is going up, they could come down here while, you know, U.S., you know, some of the stable coins uh, market cap is 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 going up um, and taking up more dominance. It's hard to say, right? It's really hard to say. But this is my view that all Bitcoin pairs come down here. <coughs> there does exist a scenario where I'm wrong about that, right? So there's three things, right? As I said, Bitcoin dominance to 60. I mean, I feel like we can more or less give me that at this point. I mean, yes, it's possible that we don't hit 60. And I'm sure if we don't, I'll never hear the end of it. But um, there is a possibility where all Bitcoin pairs don't go to 0.25. If this is the, the weird thing, the nuance, if they do it would actually be better for altcoins because if they come down here, they're more likely to then go back up in 2025 in a more aggressive manner, right? In a more aggressive manner. If they don't come down here, then if they do something like this where they bottom there, then they probably aren't coming back up here in 2025. Let me show you a, 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 a case example, right? XRP Bitcoin. XR, XRP, let me just find it over here. Actually, I think I need to go over here and find it. I don't, I don't even think I have it on the, the watch list. Um, look at this. This is one that has always done this sort of this oscillator thing. But at one point, you could have said that XRP Bitcoin was going to fall all the way back down here to 441 sats. But then it ended, it ended up bottoming out at 600 sats. You see that? But because it didn't actually go all the way to the range low, it then did not have enough strength to make it back up to the range highs. You see that? So yes, it technically was sort of a low for a while that was a little bit off of this low, but it didn't go back up to the range highs, and then now it's just bled back down to that level. Do you see that? So 
I want to be open-minded about that, right? If, if we get to early 2025 and we've got 100 basis points of rate cuts behind us and if QE is back and if all Bitcoin pairs are still not breaking down to 0.25, then it's possible that they do something like that, right? Where they start to break down and then they just sort of rally back up and then they just come back down again and they never actually go back up here in 2025. So I would say that if alt Bitcoin pairs come back down here, that would be the best case for the DGENs among us, right? Because then I, I feel like they would get a big reversion in 2025. If they don't come down here, then I think the reversion will be a lot less. My base case is just going to be that they're going to bleed to the range lows. That's my base case. I, I can't say I, I I can't say anything else because monetary policy hasn't sufficiently changed. Now you might say, well, Ben, technically speaking, the Fed cut rates. That might be true, but remember last cycle, the Fed cut rates, and all Bitcoin pairs had their final capitulation after the Fed cut rates. Right? It was it was after it was about a five weeks or so after the Fed cut rates that they had their final capitulation down. So you could have a scenario where like they drop and and then they sort of bounce like that, right? Where they maybe don't make it all the way down here, uh, but they get pretty close. The other thing to remember too, is that last cycle, alt Bitcoin pairs did not bottom until the Fed began expanding their balance sheet again, right? Alt Bitcoin pairs bottomed right there. And that's where the Fed pivoted from QT, quantitative tightening, to quantitative easing, right? You see, that's where all Bitcoin pairs bottomed. And so far, we're still seeing QT. This green line is still going down, and all Bitcoin pairs are still going down. If you look closely at all Bitcoin pairs, um, one of the things you'll notice, and I've said this many, many times, is that what likely was going to happen was that the bull market support band would eventually go below this prior support level, turn it into... You know, because all Bitcoin pairs have tr been trying to break down, but I said I think they might need the bull market support band to come below the range low to really push them down. And you can see that ever since the 20-week SMA and the 21-week EMA hit that level of 0.4, which was the prior support, now all Bitcoin pairs are, in fact, getting rejected from it. Which makes me believe that they're still likely going to get that move to the downside. If you actually look at, at how alt Bitcoin pairs bottomed last cycle, what you'll notice is that they had sort of three, they, they tagged that trend line three times, more or less, right? You had sort of the first tag of the trend line way up here, and then you tagged it here, and then one final tag of the trend line two months after the first rate cut. Um, and then now, if you look at something very, very similar for this cycle, you could argue that it's doing almost the exact same thing, right? Where you get your first tag of the trend line at a very similar level as it did on its first tag over here last cycle. Then you get the second tag of the trend line at a very similar level as the second tag of the trend line over here last cycle. And then the third tag of the trend line could potentially come right here in December of 2024, which is exactly when all Bitcoin pairs bottomed last cycle, December of the halving year. It, I mean, it just seems like that has to be the most likely outcome, that they capitulate in Q4 to Bitcoin. And maybe I'm too stubborn and I just can't see the other view. But my views on Bitcoin dominance have been right so far, so I, I think it's going to go higher. The big question, the elephant in the room is, is 60% the top or does it go higher than that? For now, I'm sticking with 60%. But if alt Bitcoin pairs are capitulating and ETH Bitcoin is still going down at 60% dominance, then it's going to go higher than 60%, right? And that is why it makes sense to just have stuck with Bitcoin for so long until 60% dominance. Because then once dominance hits 60%, you can come in, right, and figure out, you know, how do you want to allocate your funds, if you rode altcoins down for the last three years against Bitcoin, you're more desperate. And I see people on Twitter saying things like, you know, don't worry if your alts are down 80% or 90%, right? You're going to be okay next year. That wasn't the point, right? And and these are the same guys that you'll find in my, in my replies 
three years ago and two years ago telling me how wrong I was about Bitcoin dominance. Now they're out there reassuring people with inspirational quotes as to why it's okay they held their altcoin down 80 to 90% against Bitcoin. What if those people lose hope, right? If those people lose hope, that could cause all Bitcoin pairs to crash. And then maybe they finally go up in 2025, which is when they went up last year or last cycle, 2021. And when they went up the year before that in 2017 or the cycle before that in 2017. So it's 2017, 2021, 2025 for all Bitcoin pairs going up. And every other year, they just go down. And I know this seems like it's the crazy view and they've painted me out to be the bad guy, but it was always the most likely outcome. Dominance goes, or sorry, all Bitcoin pairs go up for one year and then they bleed for three. Up for one year and then they bleed for three. And this year isn't over. And I think there's a chance that these guys, these these altcoin guru degens are, you know, I think there's a chance they might capitulate their altcoins back to Bitcoin at the same time they did last cycle. And then it's the following year where those altcoins maybe finally show some strength. But listen, guys, in the short term, uh, there's all sorts of speculation as to where Bitcoin USD is going to go and where Bitcoin dominance is going to go. But I would say, and I, I've, I've learned this many, many times over the last few years, it's easier to predict where the wind is blowing than where the wind is going to stop, right? So it's easier to say, and this is why price predictions are useless, right? A lot of people put out all sorts of price predictions. How many people told you back in March that, do, that, that Bitcoin is going to be at 100K by the summer? And now those same people will just keep kicking the can down the road. Some of them have actually turned bearish since then, right? Price predictions are useless. What's more important is where the wind is going to take you, right? Does it make sense to be bullish on something or bearish on something? That, I think, is what people should spend more time figuring out, not the price that it's going to go to, because no one knows. But if the wind is blowing in the direction that Bitcoin dominance is going to go higher, then I'm going to remain bullish on Bitcoin dominance. So as long as QE hasn't started yet, and as long as we really haven't had a sufficient amount of rate cuts, then it makes sense to just be bullish on Bitcoin dominance. I think it's funny that it it is all kind of coming together in the last two months of the halving year, and it seems like dominance is approaching 60% at the exact time where I've been saying it likely would for the last at least six months. Um... But I think it makes sense to stay bullish on dominance for now. What would a sufficient number of rate cuts be? Well, last cycle, dominance topped when QE began, but it also topped after 75 basis points of rate cuts out of 250. What's really interesting is at the next FOMC, we're likely going to have reached 75 basis points of rate cuts out of 550. It's kind of interesting, right? Um, actually, no, it wasn't. Was it? Uh, big? No, I'm wrong about that. Bitcoin dominance did not top after 75 basis points of rate cuts. It topped after only 25. Wasn't it? Um, uh, 50 basis points of rate cuts, right? It was 50 basis points of rate cuts, I believe. Let me just pull it up rather than just keep talking um, nonsense. Uh, let's see. So they, they they cut in July and then they cut again in in September. And you can see that Bitcoin dominance basically topped out in September. So let's just say, you know, it was around 50 basis points of rate cuts where Bitcoin dominance topped out. So far, Bitcoin, you know, so far we've gotten 50 basis points of rate cuts and Bitcoin dominance has not topped out. But I think the point is that this number, like this fraction is much greater than this fraction because the terminal rate was a lot higher, right? So that was why I was saying you likely need more rate cuts to to sort of give you the same type of loosening that we got last cycle, right? I, I think that's more or less should make sense, right? You know, maybe it's, you know, 100 basis points of rate cuts. Maybe it's more. I don't know. But that is, I, I think, sort of the, the thing to think about is, you know, yes, we've had about the same amount of rate cuts as when Bitcoin dominance topped last cycle, but the terminal rate was different. 
So, as we've been talking about, the elephant in the room is that Bitcoin dominance is almost at 60%, but all Bitcoin pairs are still at 0.38, or what are they at? 0 0.38, 0 0.37, 0 0.37. All Bitcoin pairs are at 0 0.37. I think all Bitcoin pairs are going to 0 0.25. But how do they go to 0 0.25 without dominance going above 60%? It could be because of ETH, Bitcoin bouncing. It could be because of some shenanigans in the stablecoin market. Or it could just be that Bitcoin dominance goes above 60%. Or it could be I'm wrong about this. In the short term, I would stay bullish on Bitcoin dominance for at least two more weeks. For two more weeks. Um, the next meeting, F next FOMC is November. I would stay bullish on dominance till then, at the very least. I'm leaning towards just staying dom you know, saying bullish on dominance through the end of the year, right? I mean, that's probably the best case scenario or the most likely outcome is just stay bullish on Bitcoin dominance through the end of the year. Um, but for now, if you're taking it one step at a time, I'd like to see 60% first. I'd like to see 60% and then see where altcoins are, see what ETH is doing, and then reassess, right? There still is a chance that dominance tops at 60 but if all Bitcoin pairs finally begin their capitulation in November, right? If they do, then it's possible that dominance overshoots 60. Predicting the exact top by Bitcoin dominance, predicting the exact bottom for ETH Bitcoin, impossible. What is possible is predicting where the wind is blowing. Okay, so that's the elephant in the room. I hope I explained it in sufficient detail so you can kind of understand the nuances of the conversation, where I'm coming from um, as it relates to the altcoin market, um, uh, you know, especially against Bitcoin. Um, and, and, you know, maybe that helps you better prepare for what's coming in the next few months. But for now, I, I'm still bullish on Bitcoin dominance. Let's see 60%. I will be very happy to make a video on Bitcoin dominance to 60%, reassess where everything is. And then talk about most likely outcomes in 2025. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. And that was the video about Bitcoin dominance where we addressed the elephant in the room. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.